you have any idea why journeying to those places actually opens up the canvas more? Um, it's something about how the human brain and body work. There's probably a neuroscientific way of explaining the journey that an actor makes. Um, I Sometimes when a young actor will come to my door in Harry Potter and say, I'm so tired, how do I get through today? And I will say, ask your brain to talk to your breath and only be present. I mean, there are certain words you can say to yourself that allow you to tap in, because really that's what we're doing. We're tapping all the bits. It's like those, um, what are the performances you do when you're, you're in those um, capture, car not carbon capture, motion <laughs> capture. Oh, please, let's have some carbon capture too. But motion capture, it's as if we're doing that to ourselves when we're, when we're acting, that, that you know that you can tap into this. And the, the danger of getting older is that you think you know. And this is where Neil Monroe was such a, for, a transformative director for me, because he would say, don't ever try to achieve a performance. I remember as a young actor watching somebody and going, oh, she really knows how to use her voice. Yeah, she really knows how to move across the stage. Neil Monroe, she put on record, was a um, very eccentric and driven Canadian actor who was a pain in the ass, yes. but was always out of control. And, and then he started to direct, mm. and I was never directed by Neil, mm. but I was very interested when he did. What was yeah. it like to be in a room with that kind of director? Well, his, his big thing was don't, um, don't try to achieve the character. And I've always... What does that mean? Well, it's a danger that older actors particularly can get into. Oh, I'm going to use this voice, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to... So there's a patina of accomplishment but unless you throw it all aside, unless you put, for me, my self-doubt has always served me. Now, some actors only work off confidence. And there are times in, a, in, in a, the journey of a performance with me where I need to channel confidence. Now, Brad Hodder I'm working with now, he seems to work off confidence. That may be a patina of confidence. He teases a lot and he, he and there are times when I go, I need to channel a bit of Brad because I work a lot off of not knowing what I'm doing because I want to search deeper and I don't want to produce that here it comes, really, you know. In fact, the director said to me early on when I tried my McGonagall early on, he said, we're rehearsing right now. We're rehearsing. Give yourself permission to rehearse. And I think what I was doing was trying to impress him and he noted it. And then I went into total rabbit holes of I don't know what I'm doing. For the Broadway show or the Toronto here, show? Here. Because I didn't do McGonagall on Broadway. I had a different track here. So, uh, uh, and I went into lots of self-doubt, but I, but I went into self-doubt enough that I, that, I, that I made myself slow down, really examine what I was saying, and do more backstory research. I mean, I honestly don't think you get I am one of those actors, and some actors don't need to work as hard as I do. Some really don't, and sometimes I do the wrong kind of work. As a young actor, I worked too hard, and I used my brain too much. Now, I work more on the learn a few things. Well, I, and you do all this before day one of rehearsal. I can't emphasize enough. If you do accent dialect work, do it before your first day of rehearsal. Like I, I've said to Mervish, the Mervish people, I don't want to be working on my dialect once I'm starting rehearsal. No, no, it makes you too self-conscious. So would you please pay for a two, few dialect sessions so I can, so they paid for two, but I really made those dialect sessions work. I'm not doing it while I'm rehearsing because you can't work on, I just think it's impossible to work on the, the research and the becoming and how do I sound? Oh, how do I, that? you know, so, um, I channel those things before. I do my backstory research. And then I try to learn my lines, but I'm, I'm really careful. And I have arguments with other actors about how much you learn the lines. Because if I, you have to know the backstory of the character and know what you're thinking and doing. And so you're kind of making creative decisions when you're learning lines. 
and, and just know that you may need to unlearn a cadence because the worst thing is to learn lines through rote and then you've learned a cadence and you can't change the cadence because of what the director is telling you. So you have to still make yourself available in that way.